Sunscreen is undoubtedly the most important part of our skincare routine when it comes to preventing the signs of aging, and yet we are still making so many mistakes when it comes to using it correctly. So today's video is the 10 mistakes that I see most often and ways to go about fixing them. Numero uno, underdosing. This probably won't surprise you, but the average consumer uses between a quarter and a half the desired amount of sunscreen to achieve the number on the pack. So ways to go about fixing this, it really is about drilling into your mind what the correct dose looks like. Now there are different ways to measure this out. So for the face, we're talking about a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 mils. And that's based on the standard way of measuring SPF protection, which is two milligrams per centimeter squared of skin. Now you need the same amount again for your neck. So it is a lot. Now, the easiest way is to use a product with a pump and to know how much per pump you get so that you know how many pumps to use to get the right dose. Or you can use this as an approximation. So product covering these two fingers is about a quarter of a teaspoon. Or you can use a spoon. So there are different ways of doing this. The right way is the one that works for you and the one that you can use consistently so that you don't underdose. Number two is not using enough UVA protection. This is often just an oversight. You see that your moisturizer has SPF 25 and you think, I must be covered. When in fact, we're really not concerned about burning for most of the year. Mostly we're concerned about UVA rays and UVA rays come through glass and they're present pretty much all through the year. So it's really important that we get the maximum UVA protection from our sunscreen even when we're not worried about the burning UVB rays. That means typically going for a high SPF broad spectrum sunscreen. And that's because the higher the UVB protection, typically the higher the UVA. They're often a proportion of each other. How to know? Go for an SPF 50 product with the UVA circle symbol. That tells you that you're getting at least a third of the amount of UVA protection as you are of UVB. In the UK, we also have an additional way of measuring UVA with the star rating, and the star rating goes from one to five. So what you want is a high SPF, a UVA circle symbol, and then a UVA star rating of five. Now, mistake number three is not applying your sunscreen evenly. Now, the, the way to get around this is to use the 13 dot technique. Three dots here, three on each cheek, two on the nose, and two on the chin, and then any product that you have left in your hands apply evenly to your palms and then blend, blend, blend. That way you get an even application. Mistake number four is one I see a lot and that's missing bits. Now in women, I have to say that probably this area here on the hairline is the most common area missed. It's certainly one of the areas that tends to catch the sun. I often see areas of pigmentation that correspond with previous sunburn. So again, ensuring that you cover every inch of skin evenly. Eyelids are another area that often get missed. And I think this is super, super important as we don't always wear sunglasses and get adequate protection without sunscreen. So don't miss bits, apply your product evenly to get the most out of it. So mistake number five is not reapplying your sunscreen again through the day. So we're all very good at putting our sunscreen on first thing in the morning, but then the makeup goes on. And if you're in the city running errands and out and about, you do need to think about putting it on again a couple of hours after your first application. Now, for those of you who aren't satisfied with the way sunscreen sprays look on top of your makeup, for me, the best solution, in fact, is simply to use tinted sunscreen so that you can easily reapply like with like through the course of your day. So where you wouldn't be happy putting a full layer of cream sunscreen on top of your makeup, it's quite okay to put a second layer of tinted sunscreen on tinted sunscreen. And one of the best ways to do this is to use a non-absorbent beauty blender to help, you know, kind of blend it at the edges so that you're not just moving product around and potentially doesn't look quite so even as when you first put it on. Um, I have to say I find the Real Techniques Beauty Blender is really good for this. So not using a, a wet blender, using a dry blender that doesn't absorb much sunscreen. Be generous. I think it's one of the, the easiest ways to feel secure that you've put enough SPF on for a second application. Number six, and this might be the one that drives me the most nuts, is mixing your sunscreen with other products. Just don't do it. <laughs> there is simply in no explanation for doing this that makes sense to be. Your sunscreen 
is designed to be used as a standalone product. It is not designed to be mixed in with a bronzer or a serum or anything else. Please, please, please just use your sunscreen neat. Thank you. In a related note, number seven is please don't choose the wrong format for your sunscreen. Now, wrong is a strong word, but I think when it comes to SPF, we want to coat our skin correctly and adequately and thoroughly. It is very difficult to do that when your sunscreen comes so thin it can be dispensed through a pipette. And I think the problem is it then lends itself to a kind of behavior that goes along with using product from a pipette, which is to custom blend it and to apply a little bit here and here and maybe not evenly all over. It's just incredibly hard to dose these kind of products correctly, even with the greatest will in the world. I think for most people, they just see a pipette, they take out one lot, boom, that's it, they're done. And they love how light and sheer it is when in fact they're probably only getting about around a third of the amount they actually need to get the full level of protection. But again, mostly it's because it lends itself to easy mixing, which again, as I said before, is an absolute no-no. Now, mistake number eight is a subtle one and it's skipping visible light, particularly if you're pigmentation prone and have Fitzpatrick skin type three or darker, i.e. you have a lot of melanin in your skin and you're e you tan easily. Now, the reason for this is that blue light, high energy blue light is a big part of why our skin pigments. And the good news is that you can use iron oxides in skincare to help prevent this from happening. Mistake number nine is using your children's sunscreen. Now, I should caveat this. In particular, for those of you who are acne prone, there is something in children's sunscreens, typically their water resistance factor, which can seem to make those of you who are susceptible more prone to clogging up and breaking out. Um, so try and stick to facial appropriate skincare, particularly if you're acne prone and look for brands labeled non-comedogenic as they will be kinder and less prone to congesting you. On a related note, the other thing that can lead to congestion, it's not sunscreen, but just while we're talking about sun behavior is self-tan. So obviously self-tan is the safest way to tan, but if you're acne prone, bear in mind that leaving self-tan on your skin overnight can promote comedogenesis and clogged pores. So if you're going to do it, try just doing it for a couple of hours and then washing it off before bed and using your anti-blemish routine as usual. And then the final mistake I see is relying on sunscreen alone. And I often see this in my teen patients. They put their SPF on, but then they go and lie at the beach all day. And no sunscreen with all the best application in the world is gonna protect you if you continually expose yourself at the peak hours of UVA and UVB rays during 11 to three. You don't seek out shade, you don't cover up. So please use all three tools in your toolkit, shade, sunscreen, and covering up. Now, I didn't mean to scold you with this video, but sunscreen is such an important tool for us to keep our skin healthy and looking good. And in summer, it's just really worth reminding ourselves those little areas where we can just focus on improving the way we use it and the way we treat our skin because it has so much to offer us. Now, was there one that stood out for you that you're gonna work on? Let me know in the comments down below if so. And thank you for watching. See you again soon.